Hi guys. Let's see. Yes, we're starting. We're starting. Super excited. Hi everybody. You're all coming in right now. Happy Sunday day. I don't know. Gazillion of the quarantine. I just wanted to say hi and I'm super excited to have today Velma, who's the founder of this amazing uh, concept store here in London called Koi Bird. And, um, if you know anything about Koi Bird, or if not, just me in general, I love, love, love living in color, although I'm in gray today. But generally, I absolutely love it. And her store is um, this concept store that constantly changes. So every season, it has a fresh take. And I think it's just uh, such an amazing experience and so brightly uh, decorated with all these fabulous uh, new installations. And it's kind of like a fusion between art and fashion and lifestyle all together. So so um, I am a big fan and it's something unique here in London. Uh, you, if you're not here, when you do come, it's one of these places that I highly recommend that you see. Um, Belma has just joined, hi. And I just wanna make sure, let's see if I can see if I can get in. There we go. Go live and I think we're going live. Just turn my light back on because I need a little bit of light today. So hopefully in a second. Hi! Yes! Yay! I did it! <laughs> How are you? I was sure I'm going to screw this up. And not you you did perfectly. No screw up at all. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Look at you and your like beautiful tiny little you know summery outfit while I'm here in my jeans in freezing cold London. I went for a walk and it's just so cold. So um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm in Florida, so we're really lucky to be here and be in one place. Um, but yeah. Today's actually kind of overcast, so no, don't be too uh, my, my, <laughs> my, my, my tear my, my violin is very small. Uh, um, <laughs> but um, I'm thank trying, you to, I'm trying to adjust my video so that it doesn't look like I'm in a nightgown because I'm. Not. Uh, I love, I love, love, love this. I, I, I tried it's it on. You know, for those of you who don't know, Belma's like a glamazon. She's like six feet oh. tall and with a model figure. So literally, I'm five nine. Actually, wears, really and not that tall. Really? <laughs> it's just you're tall and thin. <laughs> But um, I, I love that little outfit of yours. I was just telling everybody how I love your store and the concept behind it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Koi Bird and how you ended up having, you know, creating it. Yeah, sure. Um, so Koi Bird is now two years old. We, we can't believe it. Um, and I mean, it really all started with, I, I, have, a, I have a background in finance. I, I worked um, out of college. I worked for a hedge fund for eight nine years and then after that I, I got married I, I, I had my kids and then it really the idea really started one summer it was actually after a summer um, I, I realized how much time I spent um, looking for bikinis that are different that are unique that are different kind of brands than what we're usually what we're used to seeing um, on everyone and all the retailers in, in, in London and in the UK so it was a real passion to kind of search for all the summer wear I love summer I love beach holidays you know whether it's <laughs> yeah so and I traveled I, I you know I kind of got schooled in the US, lived in London, moved with my husband to Hong Kong, we traveled a lot. So, and that was my most kind of fun shopping time was when I was shopping for those holidays. And that's when I really poured all my kind of time and passion and I was really interested in finding the different brands, the brands from Brazil, the brands from Colombia, from Morocco, from, you know, the, the more kind of under the radar Italian brands. So, and, and that was, that formed my holiday day wardrobe and, and it was kind of a no-brainer to me it was easy I loved it it's like it's like watching Netflix to me you know um, and then um, I came back from a summer holiday thinking um, and I, I, I say this story I, I mean I mean this in a, in a, in a good way and, and thinking kind of I have all these amazingly gorgeous friends who travel, who go to all these places, who, who you know, shop and, 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 and curate their wardrobes, but, but there's not that much to find. You know, you've, uh, mostly people are wearing Eras or n nothing wrong with same, Eras. Same thing. Nothing wrong with it. You know? But a lot of the same kind of more safe and, more, and brands that are more available because not everybody has the time 
to be searching and finding and, and enjoying it like I do. Um, and then I just thought I've got all these beautiful friends in, 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 in kind of samey conservative swimwear. <laughs> So, so I, I came back from, and, and, and you know, and here is my kind of summer wardrobe with the pinks and the feathers and the this and the. I that. love and, and, that. You give it a lot of personality. I think that's what's so nice. Like you said, you know, even if you have time, you don't even know where to look because the internet. Right. I mean, now shopping has changed a lot too, so not everything is like an in-store experience. But you've made it a destination sort of place too. You make it fun to want to go shopping, and then you do have all these great brands. I remember the first time I went in. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. I want it all, you know, like, oh, it's just perfect for, yeah. it was a summer edit, and I just, I love the colors, I mean, you always are so beautifully in color, and I think that's, especially now, I feel like that's a sort of a change, you know, I, I notice people on Instagram saying, I'm so sick of my black and my navy and my gray, and I'm like, yes, live in color, it's or great. even the beige and the neutral, you know, I know it's been really trendy for the last couple of seasons, the whole beige and the neutral, and, and you know, We've a little bit too, but I mean, like everything, and actually being able to curate that. Well, one, you have a great eye, and and, um, and obviously, if someone can bring that eye and curate it for you, it's always so much nicer than having to to try and figure it out yourself if you're not so inclined, basically. But um, and and now this is so. This is your is it your second or third? Uh, no, it's your third edit. It's actually, flavors. it's actually our fifth. Our fi oh, fifth! Oh my yeah. God! So we and so the, the kind of point of the brand was to explore these different themes and these different um, destinations and and curate the whole season in that destination's theme. Because what we do is we also go to Korea and to Seoul Fashion Week and we find all the designers that we like there and we bring it back. The idea is really to show people something new, to have it be almost like a gallery space for fashion. Um, it's a real immersive. Uh, experience for fashion, for lifestyle, and just just to just to, to to inspire people to just show them something new, whether or not you like it or you buy it or it's you or not you, and it, it doesn't matter. Sure. I think to us, it's more just kind of broaden people's horizons of different brands, show them what's out there, and show them how to you know be be fearless, be bold, be um, you know really expert. And that's I think right now what's important. I think a message that's important to be said, especially when it comes to being in the fashion industry, which, you know, is not, it, it is not the most kind of important thing to be thinking about right now. Um, but what it can provide, I think, for us is, is this inspiration, is this self-expression, is, is a little bit of fun that we need, and that is what fashion is there for. It's not for black pants and for beige pants and for a white t-shirt. It is, and, and it is, and that has its place, obviously, you know. There's obviously lives. functionality, but. There's obviously <laughs> functionality, but really Koi Bird and, 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 and even me and my own dressing is, is just, just a little bit of an escape, a little bit of a self-expression on how I feel on that day. You know, I, I talk to my team about this a lot and I say, look, you know, I don't know if there are any men listening, but when I'm on my period, I wear black. <laughs> you know? Okay, so, good to know. <laughs> it, it, so it is about how you feel, dressing your mood, what is, what, how do you feel that day, What's your vibe? What do you want to portray to the world today? And that's what fashion is, and that's what you put on yourself uh, to kind of. It's the only. It's the only uh, form of communication uh, of communication that's not you know that's not verbal. Um, and 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 that's that's why we dress. That's why we. Why, I wanted why to ask wear. you, does Koi Bird mean anything? Because uh, I always wondered where you got that name. Um, we we know it means it's a koi fish and a, it's a hybrid of a koi fish and a bird. It's it's okay. meant to stand. It's meant to represent this kind of exotic hybrid creature that travels the world and finds all these goodies and, and brings them back home to us. And this little bit of mystery and mythical kind of creature that um, that yeah that that is just kind of. Above, above us all. <laughs> you know, and, and the thing, I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan. And so, I mean, one of the things that I kind of like is, too, is that it, uh, you know, now, I mean, I'm, I sadly, I don't go into stores very often. I mean, I don't normally have so much time to do that. And now, if I do have time, there's no place to go. But um, I always think that it's nice to be able to see different things. So one of my, um, I think what the nice thing about social media and the world of the Internet is really that you have the exposure to learn about so many different things and see other, you know, designers. And you've actually been sort of uh, like somebody who stands behind all these young, new, emerging—you have all, obviously like a lot of you know traditional 
you know, designers that people would have heard of, but some of them I feel are like very niche and very specific to, I don't know, Colombia or Korea or, you know, wherever it is that your, your new uh, special, special area is. But I think that's also really nice too because it's always nice to have something that not everybody else is sort of wearing too. Yeah, yeah. And, have and that's a big thing for us. That is a big, that is a big way, you know, the, the, the big way kind of we think about the buy each season. Um, it, it, again, it is about introducing people to new brands, to new ways of wearing things, even if it is brands that you know and that other people carry as well. Um, but for example, this season we went to, well, in November, uh, uh, in October, we went to um, Lagos Fashion Week. So we have this whole kind of array of, of designers from Nigeria as well as um, a few other African countries uh, like Ghana and South Africa. But, um, you know, I, I find it pretty exciting. I basically created the store in terms of, you know, in, in terms of what would I want from a store? Um, and I've traveled around and I've shopped so much and I've been to all the stores. And, and for me, it's, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's special to have a store like this to be able to go and discover all these things. Where would I be able to find a really cool new up and coming Nigerian designer that is super talented and that uses and what's also amazing about that whole region is how how much it is about slow fashion and how sustainable they really are and how they do make everything on order right, right, on yeah. and, you know and employ all the communities uh, around them so it, there is that story as well which is really remarkable but you know just showing people other designers and not being stuck in your kind of five or six brands yeah. that you buy, buy every season. It's really about experimenting, discovering, discovery, discovery and uniqueness is a big kind of ethos of, of, of Koi Bird, so. And what do you think now? I mean, like in, in beauty right now with COVID, you know, with COVID and quarantine is I think a lot of people are spending a lot of time on themselves, a lot of time on, you know, loungewear, a lot of time for self-reflection. It's stressful for so many people for lots of different reasons, but at the same time, it gives them, I mean, I haven't had a time, time to edit my closet in forever, and I did that like in my first week of quarantine. Yeah, I saw like, that. Everything. Yeah. It was so. Uh, Can I ask yeah. what you do with the clothes when you, if you're like trying to give them away or? Yeah. Like, if so. So now I realize that one of my big things is I'm going to try and buy things that only make me happy and really have less functionality because I feel like I already have all the functional things in my closet. There's only so many black trousers I can have, so many, you know, uh, I, I'd like to, I like living in color. It makes me happy, especially living in gray London. But for the things that I don't want, I tend to like the things that I buy. So like a lot of my dresses, I still keep them and I wear them. I might not wear them one year, but I'll, I'll bring them out two years later, three years later. I, I try to buy well and things that I truly actually feel good in. And so there's a lot of times that, for instance, when I'm looking at something, and same with like skincare and beauty, is that I try to buy something that I want to be able to wear, but then it's not really me, and then I never either wear it. So with clothing, there's some things that I love, but they just don't suit my body type. I buy them thinking, oh my God, I'm going to figure out how to accessorize this and wear it. Or even like a red lipstick. I love red lipstick on other people. I can't wear it. I wear it and I feel like I look like, you know, I'm a prostitute. So like, I, it's just never going to happen for me. But I still, I, I'm trying not to buy, make those purchases and make more. Um, one, I do think it makes a difference where it's come from and how it's been made um, in terms of sustainability. And the second is that I don't want to be giving away so much stuff that has been like, you know, cost per wear is quite high, <laughs> you know, yeah. that kind of thing. But um, I have two brothers and a sister and I'm the eldest. And so uh, we all have similar body types. And so if I've grown out of something, my sister-in-law is super skinny and okay. I think her is like super bad. Oh, that's great. So it's great. So she's always very happy and I keep my clothes really nicely, you know, maintained. So it's not like I'm, you know, handing, hand me downs or anything, but I do that. And then and I do, um, sometimes I either t give them to, uh, you know, different charities that are for women that are trying to get back into the working community. And if I'm making a trip, I'm Iranian originally, but if I'm going to the Middle East for any reason, I usually take it there because, I mean, the, the, the less, you know, they, they need so much stuff of anything.
anything. They, they, I mean, they just don't have anything. So I, I take some of it there as well. So I try to like divvy it up, and I do that even with my kids' clothing too because they grow like weeds. You know, like sometimes they. I mean, I'm sad to say they they might not even wear anything more than once, and then I know, and then boom, it's like they've outgrown it, or it's the wrong season, or it never got sunny in London, so they never got to wear it. Yeah. So, like you know those type of things. What do you do? Because your wardrobe, I mean. Is insane. I hoard. <laughs> I don't give anything away. <laughs> um, no, I think s similar. I don't have anyone really to pass it down to, um, but I I do. Um, as as you said, some of the some of the charities like Women for Women or Smart Works is a really good one for yeah. professional clothing because um, the women get to reuse it and wear it um, when they're interviewing um, to get a job. So that's a, that's a really great one as well. Um, but uh, no, in all in all seriousness, I, I do hoard a lot. Um, it's it's bad. Um, the thing is, the stuff that I didn't the, the stuff that I didn't keep, you know, I said this great vintage stuff from I don't know twenty years ago, fifteen years ago. Now I really regret, get, you know selling it or giving it away or selling it for like 50 bucks um, so so the, the good stuff you know, the good stuff I'll keep kids kids clothes I do hand down um, I also keep saving in case I have another one yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have I have so many boxes of those I was yeah, saying, the I probably in case, go and but get rid of that yeah. I'm a little too old to, to think about that anymore but I, I, I used to do the same what do you think is going to happen now with um, fashion and uh, you know I, I feel kind of split so in one hand you know we were you know we've always tried to recycle and do our part however we can and um, in that kind of sense but I think in the, in the now, you know, people were against wipes and now everybody's got hand wipes and, you know, all of this plastic, like plastic gloves, latex gloves, you know, the masks that people are wearing. And um, I feel like that's going to be mainstream for uh, probably, I would say probably a year. I mean, maybe less, hopefully less, but I, I think that's kind of what's going to happen. And I think that um, clothing too, you know, just with all the... Uh, manufacturers being shut for so long and uh you know all these seasons you have resort you have cruise you have you know for all the normal seasons you know there's so many different um avenues do you think it's going to become more streamlined do you think it's going to be yeah i mean i know um us as as a business but also some showrooms and and and, and, and designers as well are all pushing for Kind of coming up with a model where you you're buying that season. I mean, it, it got so crazy with the with the multiple seasons throughout the uh, throughout the year. Then retailers marking it down early. You know, you basically have all these brands making all these clothes, trying to trying to um, satisfy the demand that both consumers and retailers have. This huge insatiable demand of more 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 so i can post it on my instagram more clothes more clothes more clothes um and yeah i mean i i think there's a real push a the brands just won't be able to produce that much certainly not for a little while oh, yeah. and b it's you know we're all pushing like i know there's another showroom in london and we're all really pushing for um buy in season shop in season you know you don't mark down summer at the beginning of may i know i know I know, cons I know it, it's a good thing for consumers, I suppose, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't anyway, honestly, you shouldn't be buying something because it's on sale. You should buy it because you really love it, it and you really want it. Just buy the one thing that's going to make you happy. Like you said, I'm really glad you said that because that's really the mentality that we try to push. I know, um, obviously buying less, buying better, buying more sustainable is the way the world's going and we all should be doing that. But I do still think there's a place, for example, for some crazy pieces in Koi Bird in people's wardrobes because that gives you the happiness, the va va voom, the, 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 the something, something else. It's not just about buying an extra, an extra garment of clothing. So I think that will still stay. I, think, I still think people will have a need to, 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 to make themselves feel happy and make themselves, um, you know, uh, you know, put on this different persona, a pink persona for the day or, or whatever. But, but really, you know, selling that season, having the season really go fully through, sell and buy within that season will help a lot of people out, a lot of brands out, a lot of, um, mostly 
you know, brands because they just cannot be they, they cannot manage to meet the 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 demand every like two months and especially now but honestly it's also the consumer that has created that like think about how many times the way you shop let's say online how many times are just are you just going new in new in new in yeah yeah yeah. you know because we just all have this just insatiable demand for just newness 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 and no nobody can really meet that no Um, actually that's a really good point it's like our our mentality is all like i want it yesterday you know like it's never you know people don't like to wait anymore more and yeah um, you know they'd rather something they know and they can see immediately than like you know waiting for that thing that really makes their heart nervous i forgot is it who's the woman who like does all the uh organization and closets and she says if it doesn't bring you joy you need to get rid of it i i actually know but yeah i mean you know amazing. like it, it it is it is really true in that sense i read in wwd that they were saying that people are going to become more casual now and I was like, oh, they're going to start wearing sweatpants everywhere. And I'm know, not sure. I I'm think we should sure. the opposite. I, yeah, feel like- I, mean, I wear a lot of sweats at home. I like to be really baggy and comfy because I'm working or I'm playing with my kids or, or, or you know, loose dresses. But I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that will translate into, into I mean, I think people still want to feel good and look good and, 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 and Oh, I can't wait to get dressed up and like go anywhere. I mean, I don't even care where. I just want to, well, you know, like <laughs> do my I hair. I have to say, that's one feel. thing. I remember when I first came to visit you at your clinic, and I thought it was a, it was a, it was a recommendation from a friend. Oh, you have to go to Dr. Zamani. She's she's the best in London. Because I'm always complaining about. Oh my god. Yeah, your beautiful it's complexion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. And I'm like, oh my, I'm going to ask you about that in a second. Um, but. And I remember coming in, walking in, and you had this, like, I think you had, like, a black top, but you had this Proenza um, skirt. That has the balls on the end. With the little balls. It still makes me happy, that skirt. I still yeah, and you had these, like, little cute, I think, pointy um, flats. Yeah. And I thought, okay, and obviously, you look beautiful. You know how many people are like, oh, my God, we cannot go to a dermatologist that looks like a freak. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people who start to look weird. So, um, so yes, I remember going in and being like, oh, she's chic. I can, I can oh, go to her. So <laughs> Says, I, I mean, that's I, I a huge compliment coming yeah. from you. I mean, really. No, but, it, uh, honestly, it is really rare to um, have somebody smart and accomplished and a doctor and be a beautiful, stylish woman. Um, and do you, do you think that, I mean, is that something, you know, you, you just, obviously that's you and that's how you dress. Do you, do you feel like it gives you some kind of an edge at work or do you feel no, like, I, I mean, I think, I think the one thing, I mean, also because I'm Middle Eastern, I think women in the, and although I grew up in the States my whole life until I moved to London, so it's not like I'm really Middle East or Iranian or anything, but, but I think, um, the one thing that, uh, Iranian women, for instance, they take a lot of pride in how they look. And so, you know, my mother, for instance, even if we were at home, she always had red lipstick on. I mean, it was just, if I saw her without red lipstick, I was like, mom, is everything okay like, it was just one of those things that she it was part of who she was and um i think it i think it really if you take if you respect yourself and respect is in a lot of ways it's like how how other people see you is also how you you know is also self-respect too so if you respect yourself you do good things for yourself you exercise you eat well you do all of these other things you kind of want to look your best too and however that makes you happy if sweats make you happy then that's the thing that you can wear and, and you can that that's you that you can make you can own that you know but um for me i, I like to be comfortable uh I, I i think before i used to wear heels like all the time i mean there was no time of the day that i didn't wear heels and now that i'm in my mid-40s i still love wearing heels i mean i have more heels and i have flats for sure but um i still i wear a lot of flat shoes and like I, I but I still want it to look like I am presentable you know I wouldn't want to be embarrassed if I I don't know if somebody walked in or I, I just think it's an important reflection of yourself too so I think it I, 
think clothing and dressing and skincare, all of that is all a big package for yourself. And it's how it makes you feel. You know, if you wake up and your skin looks good, you feel better about yourself. If you wake up and if you're kind of not feeling yeah. great, you put on a bright pink outfit or, you know, like you put on that, that dress that makes you happy. Well, that changes your whole outlook for the day. So, you know, it can really affect you internally as well as like how other people see you. And if you're happier, you tend to smile more, your face is brighter, you know, like it's, it's like this whole big package. So I always feel that, you know, a lot of people come to me to have things done, to sort of tweak themselves. I have a lot of women who are going through breakups or divorces or change of job or they, you know, they feel they need a little boost. And I get that, you know, like I understand, you know, sometimes you need a little something to make you feel really good, uh, to give you that confidence again. And, so, and I think clothing can do that. Absolutely. If you feel great in what you're wearing and you own it and you're like, you know, and it, it just makes you feel like a stronger, better person. So I, I do think it's really, it's everything together. I, so I, I, I don't think of it as frivolous at all I, I think um, I think there are some people who don't care and that's okay too that's their persona and that's how they are but um, I think if you do care I, I, I love seeing you know people look beautiful I, I just love to see them walk into my office or on the street or at a dinner you know it, it, it gives you joy to look at something that looks nice in, in my opinion <laughs> yeah it's definitely a whole package because even if you're wearing the nicest outfit but you are your skin looks dull and you have bags under your eyes you're you know you're not yeah you're not, you're not gonna be feeling that great so it is definitely and don't you think um how much of kind of taking care of yourself as a full package do you feel like is cultural I really feel I think, like it's really cultural. I think it is. I mean, yeah. I really do think it is. I think it's all how you've been brought up. But I think now, because of social media and because of, like, the fact that we now also have a lot of time to look into other things, but I think it is It is very cultural, and some people care about it more than others. I remember when I moved to London, I couldn't find a manicurist. Like, I, I, I grew up in the States having a manicure, like, every week, and that I, I wasn't, it wasn't really, like, a luxury. It was kind of... You know, yeah. everybody just does that, you know? Yeah. And then I came to London and it was, you know, 200 pounds for a manicure pedicure. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this is crazy, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. so, so um, I do think part of it is cultural. I think things are moving in that direction. Some for the good and some for the bad. I think some of the things that are bad from social media is that, you know, like you said, that newness, it's almost like, oh my God, I've been photographed in that. I can't wear that again because like, you know, I put it on Instagram. Like, I've heard people say that I can't put it on again. Oh, for sure. I think on Instagram or my life on social media. So, um, for sure. And I actually think people are just shop. I think people shop more just to have more outfits for social media. Yeah, I know. Like not, not even to wear and go out. It's just they like more and more outfits so that they can build this social media persona, which, yeah, is, is I know. Really I mean, sometimes I see people on the streets, I swear to God, they have a bag of clothes, they have a, someone with a photographer behind oh, them, yeah. and they're like changing on the streets to, you know, to be in front of this house or that car or this flower or I know. You know, whatever it is. And I'm thinking, gosh, but that's how content is created. And so sometimes I think in that sense, I think it's sort of not good, but that's where the negativity comes in. But I think definitely... Definitely culturally, it, it is important, and I'm trying to. I, I too, you don't want to wear the same thing like 20 times. Of course, you want to give it a break and then come back to it <laughs> yeah. sometimes. But, yeah. but uh, I think it's nice to have things that like you want to wear every day. You know, like some of the things when I buy something I really like, I'm like, oh, I wish I could just wear it every day. You know, like it just yeah. makes me sort of happy. So, yeah. Um, but that's <laughs> definitely something that's also for skincare. I mean, I think um, a lot of people also create a lot of content because they want to show what they're doing um, but I don't necessarily think more is more you know uh, I love all your accessories and I feel like skincare is sort of like an accessory too you know if you have great skin that's an accessory just like a great pair of sunglasses or funky earrings or sunglasses or whatever you can really change how things look just by changing the canvas just a little bit not so much. oh yeah and even in sweats even if you're in sweats and you're going out quickly to the grocery store but putting on a cool pair of sunglasses or and one of your hats or, or one you know, your, yeah and a bag yes. or all of the above together <laughs> but what i have actually noticed speaking of skin um i'm now going to grill you a little bit um uh what i've noticed so before i 
before we came to Florida for the, you know, we actually got out just as the borders in the U.S. were closing. Um, and, and the borders were Yeah, and, but we also, yeah, we had to be in the U.S. also for my husband's job. And, um, and yeah, so before we came out, I was in London, I was working, I was going through some stress with my kids, and I just kept saying, oh, God, my skin. Honestly, within, like, the last year, the amount of congestion pigmentation, breakouts. I never used to have breakouts. And I was just really annoyed. I was not eating that great either. And I was just really, really annoyed. It's like, what's happening to my skin that's usually, you know, not breaking out. It's pretty good complexion. And I've always had a bit of hyperpigmentation. But, um, and I have to say, the rest here, the not a crazy schedule. Um, as I said in one of my posts earlier, yes, Monday to Friday, I, we keep pretty busy. Like I have this whole kind of homeschool plan with my kids and then homeschool from this time to this time, then lunch, then work in the afternoon, then also a little bit at night or, you know, just mix it all up. So it is, it is busy, but obviously nothing like, 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 our, busy, yeah. Yeah, and like our old lives in London. And um, I swear my skin has cleared up just from that. We, uh, we, don't, we don't realize how much stress we're in. I mean, like, oh, uh, even, uh, you know, but like, like, even blackheads, I didn't realize, I understand that breaking out can clear up from not being stressed and, and being inflamed, but just even blackheads, my pores were big. There was just blackheads everywhere, and I haven't really done anything different. I've used a little bit more of an exfoliator, but I haven't really done anything different, um, and it's much better. It's, it's amazing. Uh, you have no idea how much stress plays a really big role, so yes. even when you don't think you're stressed, you you increase in this uh, hormone called cortisol and you know if you're worried you're running around if you're tired if you're not getting enough sleep yeah. all of those things can aggravate that and even your circadian rhythm if you're not getting enough you know beauty sleep is a real thing you know like if you're not getting enough of it what happens is, is that your body doesn't have that time to relax and so you're creating more oil which creates more congestion which creates blackheads which then also contribute to potentially having outbreaks yeah. with acne so yeah. you know slowing down the corn it's a real like slowing down really you know it changes it changes your pace of life and you know I think in London especially we don't necessarily know that we don't have like a change you know like we're used to being busy because everybody is busy and everybody has a million things to do they have their kids they have their work they have their social they have their travels every eight six to eight weeks there's a holiday you know so there's a lot going on and you know big spurts of time and so I I think now that you've had the time to just sort of like you have a routine it's a yeah. different routine it might be busy but it's still not at the same level because oh not, not at all you're not, not leaving your house you know so yeah like, very little. I think, I think the, the, the happiest thing about this quarantine situation has been not having to jump out in, in, in the morning out of your bed get I the love that. Get, love I, that. I hate drop off I hope no I hate drop off too I, I know I hate drop off too I, I, I was telling my friend last night I said you know this is the thing I'm going to miss the most is that if I didn't have children I don't think I would ever start my day as early as I do normally like I would always oh, yeah. until 8 8 30 and then yeah. I would start my day normally then I waking up at 6 30 7 I mean oh, that's brutal. just for me I don't like just it that, just that difference alone makes it's huge it's, it's huge. huge. It's huge. <laughs> so what are you using on your skin right now? What do you wear for sun protection? I mean, because you're in sunny Florida. I know. I was like, oh my God. But you're good. I see I, you with I, the sunglasses. I, I, and I can, I, I'm actually really bad on my body. I am bad. And I have I have this friend who gets these, I, I probably, I have so much pigmentation on my chest. It's, no, you, I, you know, I grew up in Croatia, I, you know, and I, it, it's just, I'm just a sun-loving person. It's bad. I know. Um, but my face, I do protect. I am, and you know, I was listening to your video that you posted a, a few days ago about how SPF 50 goes on no matter if it's snowing, raining, cloudy. And that's something I learned, I don't know, maybe from a, a statistician or something a, a few years, like a couple of years, many years ago, actually. And since then, honestly, I am always a 50 or a 70 on my face. That's why I usually do look like a ghost and I have like a nice color everywhere else. But having said that, I'm not one of those people that's always swimming with a cap. And that's all, you know, I have a visor when I'm out, but I, but I, no, you, you're very good. I mean, you wear the big sunglasses, you have a hat on. I have the visor a lot the and the hat. Yeah. But I have gotten, um, it's become really bad this year. A lot of pigmentation here. I was also listening to you talking about, and I've been so bad because I've been breaking out so much. I've been, you know. Touching, don't touch anything. 
And then this one alone is just from a week ago. It was just the zit. And look, it actually more than a week ago. And it's not going away. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, that's the problem. You can't really pick. I'm so sorry. That's super bright in my in my room. I feel like I need five here. <laughs> my light but, got um, really dark. Yeah. But basically, I mean, SPF is really good. I, I, you know what's really nice if you feel like you have congestion is actually HelioCare, but um, in terms of, like, making sure that you have an SPF. Because yeah. it comes in a gel form and it's really nice but in general you know because you're in a sunny environment you really have to protect your skin and you need I mean, to I'm just like using this yeah, oh, yeah, that's great. I just like lather and lather and lather uh, and the, the helio care is a little nicer because it has a nice tint so it won't make you look so white I, like I don't like the tint because then it when I'm changing or whatever it just rubs off, uh, rubs yeah. off. Oh, well there you go so you're what uh, you're the opposite. I'm a pretty practical user I'm a, I'm a you know because I'm swimming I'm in and out you know um, I suppose if I was just lounging or, you know, yeah. And also, no no reason to look good here. Nobody's here. It's just me. And oh, you life. always look good. <laughs> like, even when no you're reason to have a um, But, yeah, so I, um, so the other thing that might have helped is um, I started, I used to use it a few years ago, and then I stopped the Floritin. The, the vitamins, that's what I was going to say. So vitamin C yeah. is really critical to, one, decreasing oxidative damage. So that means, like, you know, whenever you have the UV lights, you have UVA, UVB, and you also have blue light from all the screen time, from, like, yeah. your phone and your computer, yeah. your iPad, all this stuff. So basically that causes damage to the cells within the body because they release free radicals that are kind of roaming around. And so antioxidants don't kind of gobble up. Think of, like, the... The free radical is like a Pac-Man, you know, like, and then the Pac-Man is the antioxidant that comes and kills yeah. that free radical. So vitamin C is really crucial. I would recommend using that morning and night, like every single day, the first thing you put on after you wash your face in the morning. Um, I, I I like the SkinCeuticals one. Of course, I like my own better, which yeah, is Yeah, I, I actually, um, have it here. I was, I told you the other day, I was trying to find them here. Yeah. Is, is that the Brighton? I, I'll send you some. Yeah, it's the yeah. Brighton I, I got, and and it's really great because I, I think everybody, unless you have very sensitive skin, should be using um, a vitamin C every single day. I mean, I, I always say there are three ingredients everybody needs. One is vitamin C, one is a retinol, and the other is an SPF. Yes, yay! So actually, if you use that at night, put a couple drops on and put it all over your face, your neck, your chest. Um, use it and it's time. okay with sun exposure the next day because obviously yeah. I'm, you, I, I'm wearing, you know, I have protection on, but still. I'm out in the sun. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so this is where it's important. The education is important. So yes, what's, what retinol does, it's vitamin A. It's a, a topical vitamin A. And basically what it does is it increases cell turnover. So it stimulates collagen production. In doing that, you can get, if you use it too frequently or too much of it at any given time, you can get flakiness and dryness to the skin. When your skin is uh, yeah. you know, creating new skin and then all of a sudden you have sun exposure, you could potentially um, burn that new tender skin. So that's right. why the SPF is really important. But I always use it all year round, and I say use it okay. twice. You know, in the summer or if you're in the sun right now, and definitely since you're just starting it, use it twice a week, and then slowly increase it to every other day. And then in the fall, again, when you're back you know, to your normal routine and less sun exposure, you can use it every night. But it, actually, the new studies have found that people who use a retinol have much less... Uh, uh, erythema and inflammation due from the sun and from UV exposure. So I think we're going to find that more and more retinol is going to become like total mainstream and really important in, in everybody's skincare routine and hopefully the education because people say oh my god can you go into the sun with vitamin C and retinol and absolutely you can. Vitamin C you should put on before you put anything else on in the morning anyway. So yes. Yeah, I really really do think those and are. And how right. does yours because yours says it's 2% encapsulated vitamin A. So 2% of pure retinol, I think so, yeah, considered so, so high. So vitamin A comes in different ways, and it and the retinol versus retinoid versus tretinoin. Tretinoin is like the prescription strength. So that's like what you hear in like retin A if, in the U.S. And they start you on a really like point 
point oh two five, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can increase it to point oh five and those types of things. And then um, the ones that are over the counter, like mine, or you know, different brands, they're they're usually a retinoid or a retinol, and that means that there's like an extra process they have to go through once they hit your skin to be translated into that uh, active the vitamin A active that can then improve your skin quality. I tend to recommend people to use encapsulated products because it's like kind of a vector so the, the the vitamin C or the vitamin A whichever product you're using goes into the skin without and gets absorbed without causing so many of the downside effects from it so um, hopefully in using an encapsulated formula then you won't have you'll have less irritation you'll have less if any you know flakiness and I put it in an oil so that it's hydrating and so you yeah. can feel that yeah, it's it's really nice. Yeah. Sometimes you can have that too. And I think, you know, in younger people, you can even use it for breakouts. Like, so retinol was originally used for people who had acne. And then we saw that people who used it, you know, if they continued to use it for years on end, they had less lines and wrinkles than somebody who didn't use it. And then that's why, how we realized, you know, that was the beginning of all the studies on wrinkles and pigmentation. It'll decrease, like, the little pigmentation you have from your spot. Um, and hopefully... No, spot. Look at this. Look at, look at all this. Not one spot. Oh, we, can, and I, we, can, we can laser that off. I've put a little bit of tinted moisturizer, too, just to not look like that. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's very faint. It's not that bad, but, you know, you obviously want to prevent. Prevention is the most important. The vitamin C, the retinol, and the SPF is, like, the best thing you can do. I, and then, I also heard that, sorry, just to quickly interrupt on the pigmentation. I also heard that the pigmentation that kind of comes out now is stuff you've incurred 10 years ago. So remember, your skin has memory. It yeah. sucks, this memory. It's like gray hair. Once you have a gray hair somewhere, you're always going to have a gray hair, um, no matter how much you dye it or fix it. Or pluck it. Yeah, well, don't pluck it. <laughs> don't pluck it. No, I don't pluck it. I don't have gray hair. <laughs> well, you don't have any. Um, uh, yeah, your, your roots are showing. I haven't looked at gray in those roots. <laughs> Um, so, no, what happens is, is that pigmentation is basically formed by melanin, which is in the lower layers of the skin. And uh, you can do things to get rid of them. And in order to really, uh, you, can, you can treat them to make them go away for extended periods of time, and sometimes indefinitely. But what happens is, is that it takes a long time. So any skincare product that you use to lighten or brighten, you remember, a skin cycle takes a minimum of six weeks for one skin cycle to happen. And you have, like, anywhere between eight and ten you know layers of skin yeah. that you would have to do so it's almost like a you know more than a year for you to get rid of everything from the bottom to the top but if you don't get rid of all that memory then yes it comes back again and it is cumulative so you've caused a little bit of damage over time and it didn't show up for the first 10 years and then slowly the more cumulative damage you get the more you're going to see it so and then with hormones definitely if your hormones are messed hormones. up it just comes out even more birth control pregnancy yeah. you know all of that fun stuff that all can wreak havoc. I mean, like stress also, you know, can can create um, different levels. You know, I, I, the, the computer screens are really bad. So you don't have melasma, but melasma can happen too, and that's like, it can accentuate your pigmentation. Some creams can also do that, like um, self-tanning creams. I don't love using self-tanning yeah. creams on the face. Yeah, yeah, me too. It makes the dark you know, areas you almost dark dirty because it makes the dark uh, areas Oh darker. my god, totally. Totally. I was just yeah. gonna, I was was gonna say that I, I know obviously it's better for you but I'd rather just have a white face and a tan body I'd rather <laughs> use like a bronzer I mean like I love the yeah, I don't, bronzer. that's yeah. all I ever use but like I I can't put I would love to because the only thing that I care about is my face to be a little have a little color but the minute I put that on I'm like oh my god I have more pigment than I had without this on. and it like gets into your pores and you do look dirty yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not a huge fan. And as you said, exfoliation and like a nice cleanse is really nice too. Especially but if you're using so about much that because people have differing opinions about exfoliation. You know, you ask certain people and they professionals and they're all about, oh, don't do anything abrasive, don't do like any kind of hard um I know, agree with exfoliants. You know, just do kind of light AHA or peels or, you know, um, just light exfoliation more often than the scrubs. Um, and then obviously in the States now, I've been seeing everywhere this derma flash. I was going to ask you about that. Oh, it's yeah. Like all the rage. So and actually, I like, haven't oh, tried I'm it. Not sure. I haven't okay. tried it, but I like it. I, so you I do, do like it. But also, I'll is tell that you. just bad to be shaving off layers of your okay. face? Because people really love it. I'm going to, uh, let, me, let me say both of them. So oh, 
for exfoliation, I don't like things that have beads in them. Anyway, the world is changing away from beads because we know it's bad for the environment, and so they're being phased out, so most of those won't be around. I don't even like the scrubs where you can feel it in your hand that's super yes. rough, um, unless it's like for your body. I don't I don't think it's so bad for the body. I actually just from Foybird got this coconut one that I really like. Yes. Right I did that one for my, for my body the other day. But for the face, I think uh, using a gentle, basically like light acids are a really nice way because I think most people are really abrasive with their skin and they create inflammation, micro inflammation, and, and basically it's counterproductive for the skin. Instead of you know getting off the dead, dead skin, the pollution, the debris that's sitting there, it's actually creating injury and causing you to have an inflammatory response, which is the negative of what you want. So I love AHA cleansers uh, and uh, exfoliators, and I would recommend doing that like maybe twice a week, you know, leaving it on as a mask or something, and then you get like a nice cleanse without and a deep exfoliation without being abrasive and without stripping away the natural oils of the skin. So what you don't want to do is like be too aggressive and then feel tight. If you're feeling tight after cleaning, you've taken away all the lovely oils that need to sit on your face. So that's like a no-go in that sense. Now dermaplaning is interesting because that's basically like uh, I don't I, I always think of it like you know when a man goes and gets like a shave or like you know has like one of these. Yeah. So it's basically there are different models of it, but it's basically a large blade. And the idea behind it, it's not for hair. It's mainly for the skin. So most people have a very little amount of peach fuzz, but um, it, it basically takes off the top layer very gently. Um, I think if you, I've never used one on myself. I did actually order one um, over this period that didn't come. I ordered like a week and a half ago or something because I wanted to try it. I have tried like just to, just to see what it's like. And basically, uh, if you have any peach fuzz and you have a little bit of debris and exfoliation that you need to have done, it does lift everything off. And it makes your skin look brighter because you don't realize, yeah. even if you have blonde peach fuzz, if you have no peach fuzz, your skin just looks a little bit more radiant just because yeah. you've gotten rid of like a little bit of skin. And But you can't use it very often. Like I wouldn't use that more than once a week, you know, for instance. And I, I'm and just I worried I'm going to start like growing out a beard. <laughs> Well, you won't grow out of beard. So, no. so this is a misnomer. So a lot of people think, like, if you shave, um, your hair is going to come out thicker and darker. Usually the thicker and darker happens because it's hormonally regulated. And, for instance, like a, a kid, when they're 13 and is just going through puberty, a boy, he has, like, wispy, fine hairs. And as he gets yeah. older, it's not the shaving that makes it thicker. It's just the fact that now he's older and those hair follicles are more mature. And that's the, that's the tendency of that skin in that area. Um, so, you know, you're not going to make it thicker. I do think sometimes plucking makes them a little bit more resilient. So if you have facial hair, you know, that's why they say if you have um, any hair on your body and you want to laser, it's better to shave than it is to, to yeah, pluck or, it gets coarser or, or wax. Yeah, because that makes the root of the hair stronger. So here you're not touching the root at all. It's all like above the, the skin. So you won't make it, you may notice that a little bit more because once you've done something, then the next time it comes back you're like oh my god I didn't have this before and now I have it and like you know but, but it shouldn't make it at all. Okay so you, you're up for trying it. You don't think it's a, it's, it's harmful if you don't use it too much. No I, I mean I would start off like I, I wouldn't do it more than once a week. Yeah. Um, but a, a lot of people like it and Middle Eastern people love it because it does at the same time get a little bit of hair. I mean obviously you can't use it on places like a mustache, the, your mustache. Of the lips or I wouldn't use it like close to the eyes or the eyelids but on the actual the face uh, the sorry forehead. you said you wouldn't use it on the little mustache part no you can use it here but not on the pink lip so you can use it oh, this yeah. is called the white lip you can use it on the white lip like anywhere that you might have hair but nowhere where you wouldn't have hair so most people don't have hair here here like on those areas I wouldn't do it um, but yes I wanted to I want you to tell me what you think of it once you oh, no, got it faster first I'll get it I guess I'll get it faster than you if it, did you order it from the States uh, I did order it from the States, yeah. Okay. You'll probably get it before me. I'll get it faster. And I want to ask you um, about these glow-boosting ampules. Oh, yeah, yes, I love them. So, well, first of all, the biggest question is, 
Are they meant to be all the way to the top, or is no. It, is some, no, no, no. That's okay, like, did somebody off use this? That, no, no, I no. just got well, yeah, and then put it back on. So no, so I have okay. mine here too. So this is actually a lot of serum, and that white line right here is where yeah. it breaks open. So, oh, okay. so basically, you have this top, and then you but look. Uh, some of them are higher than others. Is that normal? Uh, it, it, yeah, it's normal. It's it's okay. a it's a matter of the concentration. So basically, um, because you can't have too much different acids, there's only so much you can put in an ampule for okay. safety regulations because you it's, it's it's more for the dosage that you can use on the face <laughs> i'm but, such a um, cynic i was like god somebody use this and no, 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 sold no, it to no, me no, after no 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 yes so, okay, so tell yeah. me about them i'm so, so interested to try this so um, this is basically a five-day regimen you break you wash your face uh, mm -hmm. you break open the first capsule and then you uh Put it all over your face. There's actually a lot of fluid in in the in these little ampules, mm -hmm. so you're gonna have a lot more than just your face. You put it on your neck, put it on your chest, and if you still have anything open, then you put it on the body. So see when you break it open, I actually broke one open. It goes where that line is, so that's yeah. where it breaks open. How did you break it? You literally just did it with your finger. No, so I use this. Um, so you put this little plastic on top. Yeah. I and got then it. Oh, you just sit open. Okay, it comes mm -hmm. off. Super okay. easy. You've got this AM and PM. Okay. Yes. And then it's a combination of different acids. So it's basically lactic acid, um, glycolic acid, ascorbic acid, vitamin C, and then a meso cocktail. And so I, I know that's what sold me the meso cocktail word. I, 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 the oh, cocktail. Meso cocktail. <laughs> the cocktail or the meso? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> skin is skin cocktail basically yeah so, um, if you use it for five days so you break it open you put the first capsule on and then you can put your normal skincare and makeup on and like go on your normal day and then the same thing at nighttime you wash it off and then um, you put this uh, you break one of these capsules open you put it on and anything else you want to put on at nighttime and after the five days you really do have beautiful skin so it's hydrating it's nourishing and it helps with pigmentation it's actually a really you should try it right now while you have like five days to yourself i think it's i, I created it mainly for people to have um something to do in the comfort of their own home and to be able to do it instead of coming to the doctor's office so instead of being able you know not everybody has time during the working hours to come in and have like a nice little tweak or something and so this yeah. really mimics that for like a special occasion a party or you just want to give your skin like a little uh, reboot it's really nice to do and just remember you need to wear sunscreen but there's a lot of solutions in them so um, the the lines you know the amount in them is the maximum amount that we can kind of put for safety reasons. and then after I can just put on your hydrate and nourish which I really like a lot yes yeah which is SPF and everything like that too and actually, that, you know, all of these things together, you just have to remember that in, when you do skincare, like I said before, you have to give your skin like six to eight weeks to start seeing a difference in how your how your skin looks. You know, it's a, it's kind of like exercise. You start working out, you don't see the results, and then you know, slowly, slowly, things start to change. It doesn't happen all at once. Sometimes the only caveat is if you do have like acne and you start using like a retinol, you can see an improvement kind of quickly. So. That does and do you believe, obviously you have your own line, but, but you know, maybe controversial question, but do you believe that people should take a break from kind of, <laughs> let's say, from products like, you know, let's say you use one kind of uh, line of product and you do the, their whole regi regimen um, for yeah, you take a whatever. holiday. Do you take a holiday from it and change up, change it up, and then go back to it, or is that kind of a myth? No, I mean I think it's kind of like I, I don't, I, I think it's different than like say hair, which is like dead by the time it like comes out or something like that. Your skin is constantly replenishing. It's I mean, really dead right now. No, no, well I mean like you can put products to soothe it, but you're not. You're the, in order to have healthy hair, it's whatever's coming out of the roots. So it's yeah. like whatever you're internalizing at the time. But for skin. Care, I think it's not important necessarily to do that. It's okay to, you know, I always think people find things they really love and then they stick to it. And so they might take something from this line and something from there. And I think that's okay as long as you have like a good routine where you're doing, my ethos is to reveal, enhance, and protect. So you need to have a good cleanse. You need to exfoliate once or twice a week. And then I do think you need some really important good ingredients like a vitamin C, vitamin E, 
obviously different kinds of ceratides or pe uh, ceramides or peptides or hyaluronic acid, different things that can lock in hydration. And then you need your SPF and a retinol. And, you know, if you need to mix and match, that's okay too. Um, obviously, the more you use like an active, like a retinol, um, you know, you're using 2% with this one, for instance. Well, your skin, if you may decide that you want to boost that up and go on to a prescription strength later on, you know, so mm -hmm. to, uh, to get like an additive effect. And I do think that, you know, the, the, the amounts that are in skincare, as you get older, you need a little bit more help than when you're younger because obviously your skin yeah. is re replenishing itself so much faster. So I think that's... Uh, I just saw that somebody asked if this product is okay for, if the, the retinol product is okay for sensitive skin. Yes. So sensitive skin, you have to be careful with. If you ever try any actives on, you have to make sure that you do them one at a time. So if you're going to start a vitamin C, don't start it at the same time as the retinol. And start the vitamin C maybe twice a week. I always say start off twice a week. Use it for two or three weeks. And if you don't have any problems, then increase it a day a week. So the next week, you use it three times a week. The week after, use it four times a week, and so on and so forth. So it can take a time to get to doing it every day or even twice a day. But start off slow and you shouldn't have any problems. Um, the retinol, actually in people who have, for instance, rosacea, also sensitive skins, the, 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 I think it's fine. The people who have eczema, those are the ones that retinol can sometimes be a little bit more irritating to. And uh, that I would do very small amounts, very slowly, just to see, just so you don't have a flare-up of eczema. But otherwise, you should be okay with that. And that's eczema on your face. For, for example, I get eczema on my face on my fingers. No, it's more winter. So some people get it on their bodies but never on their face. But if you're somebody who is prone to getting, you know, a lot of people get it around their eyes, around their nose, the mouth, you know, then I wouldn't. Or if you're suffering from like a dermatitis, which is an inflammation of the skin on the face, then, then obviously I'd stay away from all those actives until you've cleared up like the skin condition first. But no, otherwise it's, it's good. And I have to say one more thing that I love about your products is the packaging. Oh, uh, you know what? That, that was <laughs> it's the pink packaging. Sure. Because Koi Word is pink, was pink the first time. Koi and I remember pink, walking yes. in and I was like, oh my God, this is my heaven. This is like I my know, heaven. That's what I love. And it's so feminine and beautiful and elegant. Uh, and thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And so what are you thinking in terms of reopening when you're going to reopen your clinic or when you're going to be comfortable going back? Or how, how is it in the UK in terms of... So I'm not going to open until they give me the okay to open. The government says it's okay to open. Um, I have been tested. I actually had COVID-19 and I did not have any symptoms. I was one of those silent carriers. My whole family has uh, had it. And, um, you know, I feel fortunate almost that I had it. So I, I, I can't give it to anybody and no one can really give it to me. So I feel whenever the door is open or the yeah, government around, to go to you. I, I think I would feel safe. Obviously, we have a lot of precautions that we will need to take in our clinic itself to make sure that there is adequate space and time to clean and to make sure that anybody coming into the office is protected just by coming in. I think I think that's going to be the hardest part of all of this for every every store, uh, business, industry is, is the social spacing that's going to be needed, especially in a place like London where space is like, you know, not as a luxury. It's not, you know, not that everybody has tons of space to be able to wait. But I think what we'll implement is more people will get a text message. They'll have to wait in their car or outside. And then when they get the text message, they can come into the clinic. I think that's what we're looking down towards to see and making sure that, you know, we have good uh, cleaning systems. So uh, I can't wait. I kind of, I really miss it. I've, 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 I've tried to take COVID as like this quarantine as like a nice reboot and to reassess and to spend time with the family. But I'm I'm missing people and, you know, yeah. my little, that little buzz. Friends and clients and the buzz, yeah. Yeah, and are you, um, are you planning on going, to, trying to go away this summer? To I to... would love to, but, you know, who knows what the world's going to be, you yeah. know, I'm not going anywhere if all the restaurants and beaches <laughs> yeah. are closed, so I'm not quite sure. We haven't decided yet. Um, we may even just come to the States to, to visit family. Um, what about you? Are you going to be able to go away? Um, 
Um, yeah, we're not sure either. As you know, it, it, as things are changing, we're just we just have no idea, honestly. We're, we're we'd like to just 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 like you said, but um, just no idea what we'll be able to do. Are the borders going to stay closed? Are I know. you able to travel within Europe? And even if you are able to travel within Europe, we go to we go to Italy a lot, but you know we wouldn't probably feel comfortable doing that maybe yeah, right now right. so um yeah really just trying to figure out where where the world's going and and i don't think anybody knows that's the sad part yeah we just have to wait yeah. it out a little bit longer yeah yeah but i know that everyone is so keen to leave their house and get out and, and get go to work and actually and see I, I want i want everybody to see your little caftan that you're wearing right now oh. someone asked if it's vintage it's, it's not it's actually on koi bird i did try it on is this the short one or the long one it's the long one and more few asked if it was vintage and more few we actually have their beautiful pieces in koi bird as well and they're a vintage store in new york um that um do special collaborations with us and they're really amazing just to find really rare vintage from um, but yeah, no, this is, this is, uh, that was Bridget probably. Bridget, this is not vintage. This is a uh, Loretta Caponi um, that we did with them um, for Koi Bird. And it's got these little bows. It's super cute. Uh, it's just an easy, super cute. Uh, it's gorgeous. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for so being much. such a good ambassador and oh loving all my stuff. Love, and I, I you look so amazing in all of it. And, and I just love seeing women that are bold, that love fashion, that love to experiment, that love to kind of, as I said, communicate through through their clothes. And it's just such a nice, it's, it's that first impression. Like I said, when I walked into your clinic, I was like, ah, oh, this girl, th this girl oh, knows where it's at. Well, no, you're so sweet. Thank um, you, thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Thank they're, you they're so They're kicking much. me off this now really nice. because there's like a, a timer that comes up on my screen that says that it's going to disconnect us. But okay. we didn't have any glitches. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your time in Florida. And I hope to see you soon on the other side. Thanks, Miriam. You too. Speak Thanks. soon. Bye. Bye.